Hey guys, Rachel with Bee Hill Dog Training, and I just wanted to take a minute to talk today about the structured walk. Um, so your walk should have a lot of structure to it, hence the phrase structured walk. Um, Khaleesi here is a one-year-old husky who got here yesterday, about 24 hours ago now, and her idea of a walk was not so structured. So she was really, really bad about pulling, pulling hard enough that I was having a hard time holding on. Um, sniffing the ground constantly, zigzagging back and forth, running all over the place. Um, I didn't see it because I live out in a very quiet, remote place, but I've heard that when she crosses paths with strangers, people she doesn't know, dogs she hasn't met, she loses her mind um, in what's believed to be a friendly way, trying to engage in play, but she will bark and lunge and, you know, just kind of lose her cool on the leash. So um, within about 24 hours, this is what our walk looks like. And so I just want to talk about what a walk should look like. For starters, you'll notice she's walking in a heel, which means that she is at or slightly behind my leg. Anytime she tries to come out of the heel, I'm giving her gentle corrections to put her back in the right spot to teach her where she should be. Um, when she is in a proper heel, you'll see that my leash, even though it's short, it's very soft. So when the dog is in a heel, there is no pressure on the leash. When they step out of the boundary where they should be, then of course you're guiding them back in. Um, so walking in a proper heel is a big part of it, but it's only a part of it. So your walk should also be calm. The dog should not be scanning and looking for things to make big deals about. The dog should be focused on you and on the walk. So insisting that the dog be calm. Um, dog should not be sniffing. Dog should not be using the bathroom. You can take bathroom breaks, but even that is going to have structure to it. So if I want to give her a break to use the bathroom, I'm going to find a good spot. I'm going to say break, release her from the heel, tell her to go potty, which she's already done, so she may or may not do now. But um, potty breaks are something that you specifically designate a time for. Oh, look, there she goes. So we take our potty break, and now that we're done, I'm going to make my leash nice and short again, heel, and go back into a heel and continue on our walk. So calm, quiet, any heel, not sniffing. We're going to correct any sort of sniffing not using the bathroom. Um, and there's lots of ways that you can make the walk really engaging for the dog. Um, now for starters, I want the walk to start out boring. And what I mean by boring, it doesn't mean that it's boring for the dog, but it shouldn't be exciting, it should be calm. And once you've got a calm dog, then you can start working on doing the fun stuff with your walk. So right now, we're still working on the calm, so I'm not gonna do a whole, whole lot with her yet. But she has been learning auto sit, which just means the dog automatically comes to a sit whenever I come to a stop. And so the way that's going to look is I just cue it whenever we come to a stop. I'm not giving that a verbal command. I'm just going to cue it with leash pressure. And eventually she'll do that automatically. So that's another part of a structured walk is having an auto sit. Um, but you can also include your obedience commands in your walk. So while you're walking along, you can come to a stop. Your dog will go into a sit. And then you could have her down. Now, we haven't worked on down a whole lot yet. We've just started that this morning. So I'm not going to get into that here, but I could have her down. And then I could have her hold it down while I walk a few steps away and then have her come back into a heel. Um, you can change your speed a lot. So when you're on a good structured walk and your dog's in a proper heel, you should be able to speed up or slow down without a whole lot of pressure on the leash for the dog. So when I walk faster, she should join me. Right now she's looking at a truck going down the road. So I'm going to redirect her attention on me. Nope. Give a leash correction there. And then continue on our walk. Okay. Um, so change your speed a lot. You can walk faster and the dog should speed up with you. And you can walk slower and you'll see there is zero leash pressure on that. Okay. We'll do that again. When the dog is in tune with you, you should be able to change speed with zero leash pressure. Um, so that's another thing you can do. You can change direction a lot. You can, oops, I lost her. You can turn left and right. Put your dog through their paces. Make it, make it engaging. Make it like you're doing um, drills. You can, when you get really good with your obedience, you can do things like drop the dog into a down while you keep walking. Um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice, but that's a way that you can make your walks really engaging, really fun, and exciting without being the bad kind of exciting. And it's very mentally stimulating for the dog. So when you have 
a really good walk like that, you can take you can take a five minute walk and get the same effect that you might get with, or a better effect than you might get with like a 30 minute walk when the dog isn't really tuned in with you. And a lot of times, good, working on our sit here. Um, hopefully you can hear me above the wind. It's kind of a windy day, so I'm gonna stop and, and make sure that you can hear me better. But a lot of times people think if their dog has too much energy that they need to be walking it more. But the problem is if your walk isn't good, it doesn't matter how long you walk the dog, they're gonna have that much energy. If you can make your walk count, even if you only have five or 10 minutes in a day, you can get a ton of mental exercise. And the mental exercise is gonna be what helps the dog calm down when you come back to the house and, and go back to the rest of your daily life stuff. The dog's gonna be a lot calmer because they got their mental simulation out on a walk. So just some ideas that you can let's go, incorporate in your own walk. It's already making a huge difference here with Khaleesi. And, and of course, she'll be doing a lot more stuff besides just the structured walk, but make your walks count, make them good, make them meaningful. They don't have to be a huge part of your day to still get a whole lot of benefit from.